Cruella is the story of how the puppy kidnapping fashionista, first introduced in 101 Dalmatians, fell into a life of villainy. The film captures a bygone era in a chaotic but appealing way, which will suit viewers who understand how different things used to be. These are the things only adults will notice in Cruella. It's far from the first Disney movie to do this, but adults in the audience will notice that Cruella slips in a few grown-up vices for its characters. It's not the first time Disney has done this. 101 Dalmatians, Beauty and the Beast, Sleeping Beauty, and The Great Mouse Detective, all classic Disney films, each have scenes depicting the consumption of alcohol. Also, who could forget the infamously trippy pink elephant montage from Dumbo, after the pint-sized pachyderm accidentally ingests some hooch? Throughout Cruella, we see several characters enjoying fancy fancy cocktails at parties and liquid lunches. Alcohol is the only vice the film sees fit to include. Gone is the sinister cigarette holder Cruella DeVille's animated version carried. It would have made sense to show smoking both for character consistency and for the setting. Smoking was far more common in the 1970s and is still associated with the fashion industry to this day. Walt Disney himself was a fan of tobacco, a truth the company has tried to wipe from history by editing cigarettes out of his hands in old photos. Kids probably won't notice either the presence of alcohol or the absence of smoking, but both of these things will be more conspicuous to adults. Do you have a light? It's a cliché that if there is a parent in a Disney film, they are most likely not going to see their kid's graduation. From Simba's father to Lilo's parents and Bambi's mom, if you produce life within the Disney universe, your odds of meeting an untimely demise are much higher than normal. It's become such a trope that in many parodies of the Disney formula, the fate of the main character's parents is now a standard running joke. Disney, despite its squeaky clean reputation, often also has the villains in their stories meet their end in rather sickening fashion. From Bill Sykes being hit by a train in Oliver and Company to The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Disney has racked up quite the body count. True to form, Cruella utilizes its PG-13 rating and opts to lean into this cliché of parental death with gusto. A young Cruella, known then as Estella, sees her mother meet her end during the first act of the film. We see Estella chased from a fancy party by angry Dalmatians, who end up knocking her poor mother off a cliff. This definitely ranks as one of the grislier ways a Disney character has been shuffled off the mortal coil, especially in recent memory. Any kids who see Cruella will be in for an education on a genre of music that adults are already familiar with, punk rock. Punk started breaking into the mainstream in the mid to late 70s, giving voice to a burgeoning revolution against the more excessive style of mainstream music at the time. The punk bands prevalent during this era operated under a DIY mentality, often self-producing and distributing their music independently. The movement gained traction in the United States with the likes of the Ramones and the United Kingdom with groups like the Sex Pistols. It was counterculture, politically charged, and in your face. It's also a key factor in the plot and style of the film, especially Cruella fighting back back against the upper class through aggressively charged art. The UK's punk rock revolution serves as the backdrop for Cruella's rise to prominence, and the film takes full advantage of it visually. Cruella, shown in a quickly paced montage, stages several raucous public reveals of her twisted new fashion line. She not only utilizes motorcycles and a garbage truck, but goes as far as to stage a punk rock fashion show right outside her arch rival's event. The choice to set the film in such an important era for fashion and music is a clever one. The chaotic nature of the music and the visuals suits Cruella and her ever-escalating mix of insanity and theatricality. Adults are far more likely to appreciate the time capsule aspect of Cruella and its use of one of art's most tumultuous eras. Disney is no stranger to cartoonish madness. From Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty to Ursula in The Little Mermaid, Disney has crafted some of pop culture's most memorable and watchable villains. Although these characters have fans of all ages, truly committed supporters tend to be adults, who often have a deeper understanding of on-screen evildoers' complex motivations and psychologies. Case in point, Cruella has two completely distinct selves. Adults will understand how this fractured psyche, symbolized by the half-black, half-white color of her hair impacts Cruella's behavior. That's ugly. That's cruel. Name's Estella, not Cruella. First, there's Estella, a mildly sassy but hopelessly klutzy hot mess who's happy to stay in her lane. 
Then there's her less relatable side, Cruella, a flamboyant, chaotically self-obsessed schemer with grand plans for mayhem. When presented with the central conflict, Estella is forced behind the curtain while Cruella takes center stage. Adults will also pick up on cultural context. The divide in Cruella's personality is in the tradition of scores of classic stories, such as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Fans might also see echoes of DC villain Two-Face, who, like Cruella, has an outward appearance that reflects an inner duality. The movie's story draws on the fickle nature of the fashion industry, but Cruella doesn't stop at just the internal workings of the business. The film also has a bit to say about how brands use the media to alter public perception. Introduced early in the film is Cruella's childhood friend, Anita Darling, who in adulthood has become a journalist. Immediately recognizing Anita as her former classmate, Cruella is eager to enter into a unique business arrangement with her. Taking advantage of their connection, Cruella coaxes Anita into giving her forthcoming public takedown of the Baroness's fashion line a boost in terms of coverage. The media has often been used to shape people's perspectives and perceptions for the benefit of those looking to sell a product. This is obviously far from exclusive to the fashion industry. Examples exist in almost every industry. That said, it's a particularly important aspect of fashion, and Cruella does a wickedly good job of showcasing its utility. Adults will pick up on the concepts of brand awareness, demographics, and the manner in which the media talks to consumers. Meanwhile, younger kids will more than likely watch the movie in blissful ignorance with regards to these themes. Kids don't perceive fashion the same way that adults do, as it's an industry built on what's hot versus what's not. Words like reinventing and trends pop up quite frequently in the discussion around fashion, and for good reason. They are the backbone of an industry in which designers depend on their ability to churn out exciting new looks on a regular basis. In Cruella, we see Estella constantly innovating with bizarre designs which end up catching the eye of the Baroness. This, of course, results in Estella learning just how cutthroat the Baroness, and by extension the entire fashion industry truly is. I'll just have to destroy her, as we have so many before. Find her. The film has a lot in common with The Devil Wears Prada, another movie that uses the toxic side of fashion in its story. Both films follow an unpolished rookie working in the footsteps of a heinously conceited fashion mentor. In The Devil Wears Prada, the rookie is Anne Hathaway and the mentor is Meryl Streep, and their dynamic isn't all that dissimilar to the one between Cruella and the Baroness in Cruella. The major differences between the two films lie in their tones and styles of execution. The Devil Wears Prada is a more down-to-earth, modern narrative about what happens when you lose sight of who you really are. Meanwhile, Cruella is more stylized and has a lot to say about identity as well as embracing your inner dark side. The toxic and cutthroat underbelly of the fashion industry plays a big part in Cruella, but it's aimed squarely at the adults in the audience. It'll fly over the heads of kids who are only concerned with whether or not their shoes have Velcro laces. Ever since it was announced Cruella de Vil would be getting her own movie, the internet has been saturated with comments, labeling the film as a girl boss Joker. Since the release of Joker in 2019, any film or show that portrays a person's steady unraveling into villainy and violence has been compared to it. It's a story that started being told far earlier than Joker. A couple of earlier examples, both involving Joker co stars Robert De Niro, our taxi driver, and king of comedy. Still, Joaquin Phoenix's performance earned him an Oscar, so it stands to reason that people would see echoes of Joker in movies that followed in its wake. Cruella and Joker protagonist Arthur Fleck definitely share some similarities in the way they are presented in their respective films. Both had unpleasant childhoods, which resulted in grim adulthoods that found them grappling with instability as well as unpleasant lines of work. Additionally, they both have a moment within their films that can be seen as a sort of coming out, Arthur debuting his Joker persona on Murray Franklin's show and Estella debuting her Cruella persona at the Baroness's party. One visual similarity the films share is how, as the main character's mental state begins to degrade and their world becomes more chaotic, the world around them becomes more vibrant. It's a smart way of displaying change, and one that shows just how happy both characters are when they're indulging in their chaotic sides. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!